Hi audience, welcome to the second episode of RV Scan Bit, where we, a group of 44 JCSE elects, bring you interesting podcasts to spice up your JC life. I'm Bing Yang from 22J02. And I'm Rie from 22J06. And so for today's episode, we'll be talking about various sleep related questions and problems that you've sent us. So now let us welcome our guest speaker today, Mr. Nazri. Ooh. Hello, I'm Mr. Nazri from the GP department and also a teacher from the JC Student Council. Mm. And without further ado, let us begin with our interview. Alright, so, cool. Our first question will be, we understand that some teachers also experience severe sleep deprivation. What separates those who sleep well from those who do not? Well, it's very similar to students actually. So people who actually have good sleep, uh, teachers who actually have good sleep, right, they tend to be the ones that are much more awake and alert um, in the staff room as well as in the class classroom as well right um it's easy to identify teachers that don't have enough sleep from the eye bags that they have under their eyes they look like panda bears right um but yeah um other than that other than that right um because of the work that we do even though we some teachers might be sleep deprived um we do try our best to kind of work around it or to Mm -hmm. to, uh, do as much as we can to you know hide our sleep deprivation because um, we want to give as much as we can to the students that we work with Mm -hmm. yeah yeah I think um, one problem that maybe both teachers and students have alike would be using your phone or basically using your electronic devices to de-stress before sleeping so during CC lessons, a lot of our students have feedback to us that um, they are warned against using devices right before sleeping, but they still continue to do so because they want to de-stress and relax after a long and tiring day. So do you face this problem too as a teacher and how would you advise us as students to tackle it? I think it's not a problem that I face as a teacher more than it is a problem that I face as a human being. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because um, like, like, like teachers, uh, like the fact that me and other teachers being teachers aside, right, we, we, we too have mobile devices and we too have the same trappings that you guys have, you know, uh, checking social media or playing games, right, or doing online shopping, right? So, um, yeah, we, 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 um, contrary to popular belief, we, we face the exact same problems as you guys do, right? But how we go about tackling the problems um, is, for me, the first step to solving any problems or dealing with any problem is to first identify that you have a problem, right? Um, and for, for many of my peers, right, we do, in fact, um, much like you guys, sleep very, very late in the night, mm-hmm. like past midnight or like 1, 2 a.m. And, and if we ask, um, if I ask my, my, my peers, like, what, what did they do such that they sleep so late, right? Uh, it's just mindlessly scrolling their phones, mm-hmm. checking social media, right? Uh, right now, TikTok, Right, you, you know how you can just lose hours mm-hmm. and hours from TikTok itself, right? It's, it's scary, right? So the first step is to acknowledge that you have a problem, right? Um, that that we, s- we are spending too much time on mob- our mobile devices. But then the next step is once we've acknowledged the problem is to identify, um, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the cues mm-hmm. that leads us to take out our mobile devices, right? And then setting routines, right? So what I've been trying to do consciously is trying to sleep much earlier and telling myself when I should cut off my like like one routine that I have is to stop using my mobile phone and, and how I go about doing it is I go to my clock and I set my alarm and the moment I set my alarm nothing else I'll just um, lock my phone and put it by the side of my bed mm. so that, 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 that is a routine that I subconsciously gave my gave myself to, to, mm. to tell me to you know, go to sleep as quickly as possible mm. yeah Actually, one thing that I thought is that, like, even if you don't use your phone before sleeping, right, I mm-hmm. realized that I keep, like, scrolling through news on my phone, I was, like, thinking, maybe that'll increase my GP pay. But then, <laughs> what I'm also <laughs> thinking is that, what else am I supposed to do de- before I go to sleep, right? Because it's also advised that you should stop looking at your phone about one hour uh-huh. before you sleep. Do you only have time to look at the news uh, just before <laughs> you sleep? I... I felt very bad for using social media. Uh-huh. I decided that I should read news instead of using social media. <laughs> well, switching from one use of the phone to another use of the phone doesn't solve the problem of you not getting enough sleep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Um, if anything, um, if you do find yourself using your mobile devices uh, late into the night, 
right? And you are using it for something that you, you think is useful, right? The, que- the, the problem here isn't because, the, the problem here then be- doesn't become you using your phone to check the news, but the problem here is in terms of time management, right? Like of all the other 24 hours that we have in a day, right? Why is it that you only have this time to actually, you know, look at the content mm-hmm. uh, for your studies, right? So what about your commute to school? Right, what, what do you do while uh-huh. you're commuting to school? Or, uh, you know, in between lessons, right? Or commute back home from school. So um, what would also help in getting, uh, in getting enough sleep, right, is to look, look at your entire 24 hours and see whether or not you're utilizing, utilizing your time productively. Mm. Yeah, I also think that one thing that um, teachers and students will probably face is that uh, you might start off, like, your using your phone thinking to yourself that you will scroll through the news and then you will only do productive things. But then at some point, you will accidentally fly over to WhatsApp and then you will fly over to Instagram and then suddenly, like, four hours pass and you have been, like, watching YouTube videos for like, maybe the past two hours. So that really eats into the time that you could possibly be using for sleeping. And this is kind of related to our next question, which is, how do teachers fall asleep when they are stressed? Or, like, more specifically, would you have any tips or tricks to offer our listeners? I think different people have different ways of dealing with stress. Um, but either way, right, one of the most effective ways we can to deal with stress is indeed you know, to sleep. Right? So one of the things that I do uh, is to remove all my distractions. Right? So like we, like we discussed, I just now to put my phone aside. Right? Um, but what I also do is to you know, have routines that lead me to sleep. Right? So I wash my face, brush my teeth, right? um, and then I just roll over to my comfortable side mm-hmm. and then just start counting down and focusing on my breathing. Right, so I think that's one thing that I do to fall asleep. It's just so strange for me to tell you guys about my <laughs> sleep routine. Yeah. Oh, drinking clean water. Uh, drinking warm water. Um, like uh, two cups of warm water before I go to bed. Uh, it kind of like, it's, it's, it's also fun. Really so, so, so if, if I were to summarize everything, right, it is to be deliberate in the routines that you have that leads you to go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then, uh, actually there are a lot of students who say that uh, some of the lessons may be very boring and they think that this is not useful. And then mm-hmm. they think that actually that makes it okay for them to sleep. But actually they are curious, like what do teachers actually think when like a student is like always sleeping during the lesson? Huh. It is. <laughs> I know the would admit that the lessons are boring, yeah. but, <laughs> uh, but but it's something that we have to work on. No, but but um, I think one thing that um, that, that kind of like hits a teacher hard is when a student falls asleep in their class. Right? Uh, your, your teachers won't tell you this, but but like um, as far as possible, we try to prepare for the lesson as much as, as much as we can to make it as engaging as possible, and it's not. As if you're doing it for fun, right? right. Uh, at the end of the day, we have your uh, academic goals and uh, aspirations for us to work towards, mm-hmm. right? So we have, have your best interest at heart, right? So is it okay to sleep in a boring class? Uh, I would not say that it's okay, mm-hmm. right? But more than anything, one thing I do look out for when students fall asleep in class is to ask them what time they slept the previous night. And more often than not, they will tell me, our kids will tell me that they sleep um, past midnight mm-hmm. or like 3 a.m., right? And, and, and yeah, that, that kind of explains everything, mm-hmm. right? But, but the main issue that we have here, right, is if you are sleeping late into the night, and when I ask them, like, what time do you sleep? Uh, they, they tell me they sleep late, right? And then I ask them why. Most of them will tell me, well, more often than not, they, they will either be playing computer games or you will tell me that track catch up work, mm-hmm. right? Um, so, given the schedule of a student, right, it's, it, it gets very busy, mm-hmm. right? So I kind of understand the student tells me that they're doing work in the night, right? But if you were to fall asleep in class, you, you, you would have to realize that it's a vicious cycle, right? Because the time spent when you're falling asleep in class, the teacher's actually covering content, right? So when you're wide awake, you're chasing the content that was already covered in class, right? And all the other stuff that you have, you start, you know, that will go to backlog, right? So it, it, it's a vicious cycle that will keep repeating itself. 
they can only stop when you sleep early and then wake up early and refresh the uh, whole day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think actually uh, this was the next question on our list, but it was basically about how would you respond to a student that repeatedly displays lethargic behavior during lessons. So mm-hmm. I think maybe uh, you you said just now that if it's a, like a one time thing, then you ask them what time they slept before. But mm-hmm. uh, if this were to be like a long term <laughs> occurrence, <laughs> what action would you take? Uh, well, what we would have to do is to check in on various stakeholders, uh, <laughs> as as we would call it, right? Um, if I, I, I try not to because uh, the students that I work with are JC students, right? Um, and I would like to think that I'm dealing with young adults who are responsible for themselves, right? And are well aware and in control of the things that they do, the actions that they, they do, right? So as far as possible, I try not to contact your parents, mm-hmm. right? But if the problem does get quite bad, right, uh, that it is affecting not just your academics, but also your emotional well-being. Because uh, lack of sleep doesn't just affect, you know, your, your grades, mm-hmm. right? but like your, your, your overall health, your, your, your sense of happiness as well. If, if, if it does come to that, right, then I think keeping tabs on, you know, your parents, asking them whether you're getting enough sleep or whether there are, um, you know, things that we need to work on at home to ensure that you get as much sleep as possible, then yeah, that's one thing. Right. Um. For me, I don't want to s- like like I don't think lack of sleep should be dealt with as a discipline issue, right? But more of a um, there there could be other possible underlying issues that we need to deal with. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Additionally, to like the questions that you asked about like students and sleep. Are there any other interesting experiences that you would like to uh, share with our listeners? Regarding sleep? Yeah. <laughs> um, it could be like an experience like regarding students who have interesting experiences with sleep or your own interesting experiences with sleep or past experiences with good sleep. Um, one thing I do realise, uh, I, I, I did tr- try mindful um, meditation exercises when I was uh, a little bit younger, right? Um... Back then, uh, okay, no, where am I going with this? Oh, okay, yeah, so uh, um, one thing that really helps me get really good quality sleep sleep is to really just empty out my brain of any stresses and to control my breathing, right? Uh, there, there, are, there are a lot of meditation um, videos and um, um, audios that you can find on Spotify or on YouTube, right? Uh, you, you can just like try all of them out and then... You know, see what works for you, lah. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but one thing I do realize is that as I have gotten older, uh, I used to be able to sleep at three a.m., four a.m., or not sleep at all when I was much younger, and 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 you know, still be able to function throughout the day. Not that I'm recommending it, right? It's not a good healthy habit, right? But I realize as I grow older, the effects of having not enough sleep hits me a lot harder, mm-hmm. right? So two things. First thing is appreciate your bodies while you still can <laughs> because uh, your recovery is very, very fast when you're still young, right? But as you get older, um, quality sleep becomes even more apparent and your, your body can feel it, right? Like for me, um, when I, if I don't sleep before latest 1 a.m., mm-hmm. right, uh, the next day, right, I will have like really sunken eyes and, and my brain takes a much longer time to process information, which, I, which actually not just affect uh, my work, but also affects my safety. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, um, because like if you, tr- if you commute to school, right, you have to drive, right, um, it, it, it actually does get quite dangerous when you, you know, fall asleep at the wheel, which has never happened, right, but it's something that I'm always afraid of. Mm. Right? Or, you know, you suddenly just lose focus and you just s- stumble down the staircase in school, right? Very not safe things. Usually the school or teachers will offer advice for students who do not sleep very well, but actually we would like to ask the reverse for this podcast. Is there any advice for students who currently sleep very well? Oh, appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no, really, really. Like, like um, you are doing something right. You don't know how good a thing, what, like how good this thing that you have is until you lose it. So appreciate the feeling of good sleep. I still have it. It's really one of those things that you really don't appreciate until you lose it. (laughs) 
Yeah. But but more than anything, um, what you can do is to be an advocate for good sleep. I know how cheesy this sounds, right? But like, I think showing like one of the ways that you can show care to your friends is to tell them to sleep early or find ways to ensure that they sleep early so that they get good enough sleep so that you know we can spend much more quality time together in school the next day, you know. So yeah, I think. Uh, that's probably the end of the first part of our segment. So, mm -hmm. once again, thank you, Mr. Nasri, for attending our second episode of Avi's Gambit. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Yeah. Now, after the commercial break, we'll be entering the next segment of our podcast where we, Ria and I, will be answering your questions on sleep. Hi everyone, so welcome back to the second segment of today's episode. And the first question we have for you is, what is a realistic amount of sleep to get as a secondary school or JC student? I'll say that very realistically, right, the amount of sleep that you get will actually decrease as you uh, go up the education system. And the first thing that I would like to point out is the fact that your curriculum level will definitely increase. Your content is more difficult, the amount of homework you get is higher. But actually the second factor is what I believe to be, to be bigger. Mm -hmm. And that factor is actually the amount of extracurricular workload that you have. Like as you go up, you actually have more leadership positions, mm -hmm. you'll have more events to organize. And these are really the things that will eat up your time and seriously affect your time management. And that to me is really the big, big reason that the amount of sleep you get will decrease for most people. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I remember when I was in like year one, year two, I used to hear a lot of horror stories from my seniors. And they were all complaining that they could only get like three to four hours of sleep a night. And sometimes they even had to pull all nighters just to get like a greater assignment done. And so when I was younger, I told myself, don't end up like that. Try to have your life together. And then here I am now, a few years later, doing exactly that. My life is not in order. And honestly, it feels like the older you get, the more it seems like losing sleep is something that you just can't escape. I'll say that losing sleep is really the, uh, the general trend. But in terms of the very, very specific examples of people like me who have somehow managed to conjure sleep out of a conjure magic sleep. hat. And that... I think is maybe some strategies that you can use. I think the first thing that I would try to do to actually increase my amount of sleep is really to pri prioritize what I do. So mm -hmm. like when I was actually like earlier on, right, like in sec four, I would actually get like five to six hours of sleep a night or even less because I would end up like chilling when I got home and then I would start work at like 10 p.m. Then after that, I'll like start like work, right, and do it really late into the night. But I feel that as I got higher up, right, it's like really out of sheer tiredness that I started to like fall asleep mm -hmm. in class. And then because of that, I actually started sleeping more. Yeah, actually, I understand the part about like um, needing to prioritize your things correctly, because at least for me, I have the habit of trying to prioritize my work over my sleep. And a very big reason why I do that is because sometimes I really just can't sleep at night knowing that I haven't at least tried to finish the stuff that's due the next day. And also another reason why I just don't sleep early is because I can't really bring myself to sacrifice my very precious hours of relaxation for sleep. So sometimes I'll be awake at 12 a.m. and I will find myself on YouTube and then I will watch YouTube for the next two hours and then that is why I end up getting four hours of sleep. So that is definitely not very healthy, but it kind of works for me because I can still stay relatively alert and awake in school. But uh, to everyone listening to this, four hours looks very different on everyone. So don't do that if you know you can't do it. Yeah. I'll say that Ria is really a meddler in this aspect. Like, I think a lot of people in our cohort don't sleep a lot, like me. But like, she's exceptional, you know. She's sleeping at 5 a.m. Then I would say that in terms of the things that you can actually do to like really increase your sleep, right? One of the more incremental steps would actually be to uh, not just prioritize your time, but to actually reduce the amount of dead time you have. So... What do I mean by dead time? By dead time, I would mean the things that you do when you travel on the bus, when you walk over to the new classroom, mm -hmm. or maybe even like, so to me, like this is the time where really you realize that you're doing nothing, but you can do something, right? I have accepted that maybe I can only afford to get four to five hours of sleep a night, and that is okay. So um, I tried to move the four hours earlier. So instead of maybe sleeping from two to six, it would be something like from eight to 12 and then waking up early to complete like whatever work you have to finish. And personally, for me, I feel like it makes a difference because I'm a lot more productive when the house is quiet and there's no one to text me and bother me. 
And I can always comfort myself with like the idea that if I'm really super tired that morning and I just can't bring myself to do as much work as I would have if I were more awake, I can just take like a power nap, a power nap before heading off to school. And also sleeping early just feels healthier, even though four hours of sleep can never be healthy, but it feels healthier than sleeping late. So, you know, um, you can try it out. Yeah. Mm, I would say that uh, in addition to like uh, sleeping early and waking up early, another thing that you can try is to really uh, think about what sort of commitments you have. And then you think about it. And after you think about it, what means more to you, what means less to you. And what means less to you, you can maybe not do it, ask for an extension, mm -hmm. or like ask others to help you out with it. I think that in the end, a lot of us Arvians, right, we are really compelled to do what we feel like we are committed to do. But actually the most, most important thing is to take care of yourself. Because if you don't take care of yourself, you don't take care of yourself and you collapse, then there'll be others who will be worried for you. Mm -hmm. And actually yeah. that will be an even worse effect. Yeah, actually um, about the part about asking for extensions, I think RV teachers are generally like uh, very understanding. And if you really just can't take it anymore and you really just need to take a breather and get a proper night's sleep, I would suggest just asking for an extension and recognizing that you really just can't take the work because ultimately you know yourself best. So don't try to push your limits too far and don't run the risk of getting burnt out because ultimately your one graded assignment now will probably mean nothing in five years, but your mental health now will probably be the basis for a healthier lifestyle, a healthier routine in general from when you're like older. Yeah. So I would say that even though the amount of sleep that you get every night will actually decrease due to your like increased workload, both inside and outside the curriculum, there are really a lot of concrete, simple steps that you can do to actually maintain the amount of sleep or even increase it if you are high on copium. So the next question that I will be covering would be, if I'm feeling mentally drained, should I use my leisure time to do the things I love or catch up on sleep? Mm -hmm. Uh, for me, I think um, you really need to consider at least like what time it is when you're feeling, when you realize that you can either choose between doing the things you like or catching up on sleep. And also how much time you can afford to spare to lose out on sleep. So for example, um, if you have HBL the next day or if it's, a Monday, if it's a Monday morning and you feel like you can afford to wake up a little bit later, I think it doesn't do that much harm to take some time to do the things you love before going to sleep. So uh, for example, I realized that by doing the things I love, like for example, I like reading and writing, it really helps to motivate me and give me like a reason to keep doing and keep completing my schoolwork when I'm feeling really exhausted. And I would say that feeling mentally recharged is just as important as being physically energized. And also you don't need to do it for very long also. It can just be like a quick uh, half hour mental break before going to sleep just to get you back on track and like get you back into a working state for school. Yeah, I would say that the important thing, like in your leisure time, right? Let's say like half an hour of leisure time before you sleep or like one hour of leisure time. The important thing to do with that is to make it meaningful. So try not to browse Instagram if you feel that it doesn't really increase your energy level, right? Mm -hmm. Because for me, I watch one episode of anime. That's like I spend one hour reading CNA or I spend two hours doing my bio tutorial. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's really about what you specifically do. You make it meaningful and make it something that really increases your energy. Mm -hmm. But what I also feel, right, is that having mental health to do the things that you love, right, that will make you feel better, or having your sleep, right, is also a matter of balancing your priorities. So I would say that it's also important to keep track of your own energy level. If you know you're going to be brain dead the next day, you'll sleep in lecture, or you'll start saying stuff like, uh, the gradient of 2x is actually x squared, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. If you know you're going to say that tomorrow, please get more sleep. Yeah. And also, I think a lot of us tend to underestimate the power that sleep holds. So I know a lot of us feel like we really want to take the two hours at night when we finally are, are done with our work to relax and do the things we like. But sleep is also very important to give your brain some time to rest and recover and like recalibrate from a day of hard work. And sometimes I go to bed feeling like the whole sky is going to crash down on me. But then I wake up the next morning and I realize like after having some time to recover, I realize that things actually aren't as bad as they seem. So catching up on sleep is a more urgent concern um, if you're looking at combating like short-term brain drain. But if you're looking at yourself feeling very drained for long periods of time and you just can't get over it, it will be probably better to focus on stabilizing your mental health and doing the things you like first before moving back to the short-term concerns. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think like one of the more important things to like get from this sort of question or discussion is that it really depends on how you feel at this moment. Do you want to feel mentally better or do you want to sleep? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you also need to realize that getting more sleep is also something that will make you feel better. And that is also very important because when you have less sleep, you'll be less productive. When you're less productive, you'll feel more drained. You feel more drained, you'll feel even worse mentally. And then you'll think, oh, I need to do the things I love. And then let's say you like watch your Instagram and all for like two hours and you sleep late again. Mm -hmm. It's that sort of vicious cycle that I think a lot of people is something that they should really avoid. Yeah, and actually that is also related to our next question, which is actually in the form of a scenario. So um, the question goes, if I have a lot of work to do and I know that if I don't do it by today, it will snowball in the next couple of days. Should I sacrifice sleep and stay up to do it? Or do I sleep so that I can have enough energy for the lesson the next day? Mm, I would say that um, to maybe add even more scenario to a scenario, it would really be situational in terms of depending on the nature of the work itself, along with the nature of the lessons the next day. So in terms of the nature of the work itself, one of the important things is to see how urgent it is and whether it's an individual task or a team task. If you're very tired, right? Don't feel bad about asking someone else to do work for you because you realize that if you do it when you're tired, it's not going to be done mm -hmm. well. And then in the end, someone is going to pick that up for you. And when someone else picks that up for you, that's not a good thing either. You're going to waste someone else's time. So what I feel, right, is that if it's something that is a group task, try to get other people to do it. But mm -hmm. don't tell them at the last minute. Yeah, I think it's very important to like delegate your work carefully make sure like if you can't finish your work that's okay but you need to inform the people that you're working with to make sure that you can actually meet the deadline and um, I think maybe in the sense of individual assignments uh, I've been in this scenario before like many many times where I realized that I just have too much to do and I only have like six hours in one night so I think what would be important is for you to consider if your brain can really take that intensity of work so for example for me I'm uh, I'm a student from the art stream so for example if you would ask me like um, if I were to choose between doing six hours of like chem, bio, physics, or six hours of um, let's say elite, um, CSC because I currently take CSC. I would I would say that I'm able to stay up the whole night doing my work because the the art stream work because I actually enjoy that and I know that I am able to find the interest in that while I do the work. But if it's something that you really just cannot find the interest in, I would suggest just let like giving it a break for a while and then trying it again the next day because trying to do something that you don't like while also being extremely tired is not fun at all. I would also say that in terms of the ability to address the idea of snowballing the next couple of days, the most important thing is that you need to avoid procrastination. Mm -hmm. And like, if someone gives you work, you need to try to do it as soon as you can or rather as soon as you feel like you have the energy to do it or you feel like you have the time to do it. Because if you wait and you wait and you wait, it's not going to work for you. Then, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, sleeping yourself enough energy for lesson the next day, it's really about the nature of the lesson itself, whether you think it's important or not. Because some lessons, they might be maybe going through old things, revision, or they might be very slow. Mm -hmm. Then those can be less important. But if you know this lesson is going to be very fast, it's going to teach new things, the teacher is going to go through a very important worksheet. That, I think, if you know that, that should be something you can sleep for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I would say that another important thing is that I mean, it's totally fine to get one late night to do work, right? You know that that work is snowballing and you know that it's urgent. But that's one time you learn from your mistake. So you don't procrastinate, you manage your time. And then after that, the important thing is to recover from sleep deprivation. Because when you start out, maybe as a sec 2 or sec 3, or drinking two cups of coffee already, you maintain that sort of sleep schedule, you're going to be on pure caffeine mm -hmm. by the time you graduate from school. Mm -hmm. And that's not going to be good for you. It's not sustainable. So I'll say that the next question would be, how do you recover from sleep deprivation? No matter how long I sleep the next day, I still feel sleepy. Yeah, um, sleep deprivation, yes. I, this is something I go through on a daily basis. And unfortunately, I rely very heavily on coffee and tea to keep me going on some days. And honestly, I would say... Um, if you're younger, if you're like year one, year two, year three, I think it's best to try and stay off the caffeine because you will need it when you enter JC. And if you already have like a very high tolerance for caffeine by the time you enter JC, you're going to need a lot of coffee to stay away in class. 
this is based on something I've been observing from my classmates who have been drinking coffee from a very young age. So this goes out to like the lower set kids. And from my perspective, I think that the most important part would be to try and establish a clear schedule. So this is a period of time like during school that you must stay awake. And then once you get home, this is a period of time that you need to be asleep by. Yeah. Mm. I would say that one of the most important things to recognize in actually recovering from your sleep deprivation is that sleep deprivation is a long-term process. Every mm-hmm. single time you lose, you lose sleep, your sleep deficit will increase. And then it is not specifically you sleeping four hours the previous night that will make you feel sleepy. Mm-hmm. It's the fact that you have slept four hours for every night the whole year. And that will have accumulated fatigue. And that is really, really not good for you. Mm-hmm. So I think you need to recognize that you know, there's an elephant in the room, and even though it might be painted in the same colour as the wall, it's still an elephant, and it's going to run you over at any moment. Mm-hmm. So the important thing is to look at it as a top priority and look at it as a long-term process. I would say that for our last question, it would be, how do you sleep more? Yeah, um, honestly, if I knew the answer to this question, I would be sleeping more. But uh, the problem is that there's really no quick and easy or it's like straightforward answer to it. And... That's probably why it's a problem that all of us, like for both of us, me and Beiyang, and also probably everyone listening to this, is a problem that all of us continue to face every single day. I would say that maybe it's a product of our East Asian society, our Singapore cultural values. We have so much stress, so much work, and we all feel guilty for refusing to do work for someone else. So I say that really, as you have said multiple times throughout this podcast, it's really a matter of what you want and what you prioritize. And what is in line with your own values? Because there are people I know who sleep at 1 to 2 a.m. all the time because they have a lot of commitments. And then they feel that it's worth it because they enjoy it. And then there are people who sleep at 10 p.m. and they don't do homework. No homework at all. And they feel perfectly fine about it. So in the end, even though Ria and I both agree that sleep is important, we ourselves are not sleeping enough either. And even though we acknowledge that it's a problem and we are trying to give you valid advice to work on it, I would say that I don't fully agree with the school's line that sleep is your full priority. At the same time, you need to realize what is sustainable for you and what works for you. Mm -hmm. And you need to keep at it. Yeah. Um, As uh, one of the people that he mentioned who sleeps at 1 to 2 a.m. all the time because of commitments, I think that first it's very important to make sure that you enjoy what you're doing. Because if you're going to stay up that late doing something that you just hate, your existence becomes a lot lot more terrible, (laughs) honestly. And... It's also very important to try and keep track of what you're doing during your spare time and try to make that time as productive as it is possible, as is humanly possible for you to do. So one thing that I do to try and make sure I hold myself accountable is this thing called like a reverse checklist. So basically after I get home, I will record from what time to what time I did this. And then at the end of the day, you can reflect on it and be like, I think maybe I didn't need to spend one hour showering, something like that. And I think if you really do this for a long term period of time, you realize that there's actually a lot of time that could be put to better use or things that can be cut down on. And if you do keep track of the way that you spend your time diligently and save like a bit more time here and there throughout your day, you might just be able to conjure out a few extra hours of sleep. We hope that through this podcast, it was really insightful or entertaining for you to listen to. And you hope that you'll take home with you, well, maybe you're already home, but you'll take home with you a lot of lessons and advice on how you can sleep better and how to really manage your time better, make sleep your priority Mm -hmm. and really make sure that at the end of the day, when you graduate from RV, your eye bags are not bigger than your eyes. Yes, and that brings us to the end of this session on RV's Gambit. And we hope you found our opinions interesting and we will be posting a YouTube video, so do leave comments on what you think. We will also be uploading this podcast on Spotify for people who prefer listening. So do keep a lookout for that. The link will be on our right stories. Once again, thank you for listening and remember to tune in next week.